Hey guys, it's me, it's Queen Offset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to someone else who might like it as well. If you would like to become one of my patrons on Patreon, please check out underneath this video for the link. If you would like to get a reading done, please email me or hit me up on my social media. That's also underneath this video. Today's video is a special one that I'm doing right now on the spot because I really wanted to honor the mothers for Mother's Day in the United States. I wanted to honor my own mother and my grandmother and my goddess all set, my, what I always call my real mother. Um, I also want to honor those of you out there who are mothering. And we all know there are many ways to become a mother. It could be a child you took in. It could be a child you conceived. It can be through cesarean, adoption. There's so many different ways to become a mother. Sometimes a grandmother ends up mothering her own grandchildren uh, or an auntie or a person who doesn't have kids and really wants them and adopts them. So however you became a mother, I just want to honor you today. And I want to give a special shout out to my single mothers because I was a single mother and so was Goddess All Set, as a matter of fact. So single mothers always have a special place in my heart because we go at it alone. So I want to give a shout out to all of you who mother in whatever capacity that might be. So today we're going to do a mother's pick a card. So you mothers take a look at these three cards and use your intuition to pick which one of the three is yours. Is it card one? Is it card two? Or is it card three? Now I want to show you real fast before I get started that this deck is called the mother's wisdom deck. So each card gives a little bit of uh, intuitive or... Um, any kind, some kind, <laughs> some kind of knowledge uh, to mothers. So I'm going to start with card one. So take your time. Take a look at the cards. If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video and figure out which card is yours. So I'll start with card number one. There we go. Card number one is the Pythia. All right. So let's, I'm going to read each one to you because they're very beautifully written. And I'm going to read each one. So um, please take a listen. Number one. If this is your card, this is a card about opening up to what lies beyond our five senses. Intuition. Ask you to look deep inside of yourself for the source of wisdom. Just like the Pythia, a line of priestesses who were considered the Oracle of Delphi and spoke on behalf of the gods, your intuition is the voice of the divinity that resides within. At Delphi, the Oracle sat in the inner sanctum of Apollo's temple, where no one else was allowed to enter. Honor the prophetic lineage of the Pythia by cultivating your intuition as a sacred private matter. When you are struggling with a question or a choice, seek insight through stillness. Articulate what you are hoping to clarify and wait for a response. The answer may come in many forms, a chance encounter, a premonition, a sudden momentum toward or away from the matter at hand. As a competent, uh, as a compliment to stillness, Look to spontaneity. Step outside your routine. Take a new path through the woods. Observe your surroundings as if you were seeing them for the first time. Then, using the principle of synchronicity, allow your intuitive self to interpret the signs. Pay special attention to the area where many religions believe higher perception resides, the brow chakra. Known in Buddhism, Hinduism, and Taoism as the third eye, 
It is here where mind, psychic impressions, and empathy converge. Enjoy this fluid realm of consciousness. Don't squelch your newfound awareness with analytic rigor or get too caught up in ideas about the future. Stay aligned with the present and concentrate on right action as the Pythia advised. What does it feel like when you give yourself permission to heed this inner knowing? Often our mother's intuition blossoms most fully with the birth of our children. Physically and psychically, we are deeply connected. We can frequently sense what our child, what our children need, but cannot yet voice. Resist relying on others to tell you when or how to do something. The best mothering guidelines are usually the ones we discover for ourselves. Likewise, avoid getting stuck in the belief that you already have all the answers which can shut down the ability to attune your sixth sense. Be open and you shall receive and perceive. An audience with the Pythia means that unseen powers are at work. Hone your third eye by listening to your intuition rather than the voice of reason. Intuition is often more pronounced when the waking mind sleeps. As you close your eyes, ask this dream time visionary for guidance or experiment with the following hold a question in your thoughts then let it go observe any images and feelings that arise whether your dreaming offers direct perceptions or fantasyful impressions honor your inborn oracle and let her keep and let her help you navigate the unknown so if you picked number one, it's all about tapping into your intuition. And as a mother, we all have that mother's instinct. That's exactly what they're talking about. Um, so this card is telling you to tap into that, especially with your children and with yourself. A lot of times difficult questions do arise and reason can only take us so far. All right, number one. So... If you picked number two, I'll read you your message. Oh, you got the horse. Can you guys see that good? Let me twist it this way. All right, that's perfect. Horse. All right, let's see what the horse has to tell you number two. The horse is a great card. I love this one. I love all of them, actually. But this one is about freedom. And we all know how much Aquarius love our freedom. Freedom at the beginning of our lives and freedom at the end. Nothing we bring when we come and nothing we can take when we go. Horse wisdom associated with birth and death bookends our lives. Our short sojourn on earth is for us to discover how freedom rings in our hearts. What makes you giddy with delight? Horse will take you there. She leads you beyond your limits to places you can't reach with your own two feet. Riding horse, feeling her power surge beneath you. The wind releasing your hair. Who hasn't felt stronger, nobler, freer? Yet motherhood looms as the opposite of freedom, a time of domestic captivity and responsibility. Horse warns, don't be imprisoned by confining beliefs about your external conditions. If you hang out in the stable, deep in the muck of your thoughts, you will miss out on the pleasure of new pastures. Realize that nothing stands between you and freedom. Horse empowers you with choice. Choose new circumstances or choose a fresh outlook. You hold the reins of your life. From time to time, striving mothers are liable to become caught in the ring of comparison, jealousy, and self-doubt. If you imagine someone else's life is preferable to your own, Horse nuzzles you towards reappraisal. She shows you how to cut your own path as a mother. Mare rules the herd by instinct. 
she lose her sway if she sacrificed her nature to peer pressure. She teaches you to become dexterous in your innate authority. Whose approval do you want most? Is it your own? Put yourself through your paces, then give yourself permission to gallop towards bliss. Freedom, however, is not about self-indulgence. You don't need to abandon your family and take to the steeps to find freedom. Take the inner steps to find the world within that lives inside you. Bring that freedom home. Steep your mothering into that expansiveness. You can choose to train a horse by breaking her, or you can become a horse whisperer. Respect your child's wild nature and follow his lead to liberate yourself. Buck old habits, throw off restriction. And when you lose your get up and go, straddle horse and go for a ride. Stay out after sunset, yodel to the moon. Forget about bedtime. Out on the frontier, what stands in the way of freedom? I feel like a, a person that picked card number two is a person who doesn't feel free. I feel like they might have felt free before they were a mother or they might have never felt free. But I feel like this card is really is like urging you to find ways to still be free and enjoy your life. And like they said, it's not like you have to just walk away from your family and your children. It's more so about finding that freedom in yourself and also making time for yourself. This is where self-care comes in. So you're not abandoning your family and your children, but sometimes you might need a break from your family and your children. Go get your hair done. Go get a pedicure and a manicure, you know? Um... If you have somebody, you know, reliable to watch your children or if your children are in school, use that time to have some freedom. So I think that uh, if you pick number two, this is a wonderful reminder of to find that time for yourself. Now we're going to work with number three. Let me move this over a bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I don't know how her name is pronounced. It looks like I Chell. I'm not sure though. But this is a guy that I've come across many times. Um, and according to the book, let's take a look. It says here that this goddess is the midwife. So let's take a read of her. I tell the ancient Mayan moon goddess attends birth as midwife. She then works her way across the sun's path, weaving the warp and weft of the rainbow world and our flowering lives. If you have drawn this card as you prepare for childbirth, I tell offers a blessing for the waters of life that will flow from your womb. If she appears to you after your children have been born, she summons you to serve as midwife to your children's souls, encouraging the emergence of the jewels they bear in this life. Just as a midwife cannot push for a laboring woman, you cannot shield your child from the effort and pain of birthing her full potential. Rather, I child teaches you to stand by with tremendous love and capable hands, cheering, coaching, and waiting as a unique being hatches out of your nest. You may step in to divert a near disaster. You may nudge a timid new step, or you may add your tears to mourn a broken heart, but you cannot direct this show. When meddlesome intentions arise, I shall ask that you take a step back. Your child's journey is not your own. The life stories I shall weaves are mysteries. Only she can see in the dark. All mothers want to ensure a happy ending. In reality, we know not whether foul play or good fortune hides in the shadows. Though well-meaning, we sometimes torture ourselves and hinder our children with our un 
with our over controlling grip. Better to attend the energy of becoming with not knowing and non judgment. Witnessing the missteps and mishaps that cook our children's souls demands excruciating patience and trust. The best midwives step out of time and beyond expectation to accompany the journey of birth with what other support is called for in each moment. Like following a colorful thread through one of Eichel's exquisite textiles, trying to track a child's evolving path can be disorienting. Whenever you are unsure of how best to hold space for your children's unfolding, bring your focus back to their purpose for being. Asking young children why they are here can be illuminating. For older children, you can inquire how they see themselves and then help them pursue their vision. At any time, turn to your mother's wisdom deck and pull a card for your child to find clarity without attachment. While we must trust our own body wisdom in order to give birth to our babies, we must honor our children's soul wisdom as we watch them give birth to themselves. So if you don't have this fabulous book to be able to pull a card from, you can also use other oracles that speak to you. Uh, I noticed that the goddess oracles have a tendency to speak to a lot of mothers. So if you can get your hands on a beautiful goddess oracle, that would be helpful with that energy too. This last card reminds me of myself because I'm very overprotective. So we must remember the importance of letting your kids birth themselves. Thank you guys for being here. Have a beautiful Mother's Day. See you next time. Bye-bye.